Hello, this is Errol at home, and I'm making my first sheep tallow soap. You can cut the fat off the meat before you cook it. I did it after cooking, but the process is the same either way. The scraps were put into a colander lined with kitchen paper and set in a roasting dish and put into an oven at 170 degrees Celsius for a couple of hours. The fat melted out and I poured it into a stock pot. In the morning I poured hot water over it and brought it to a very gentle simmer for an hour or so, then ladled it through more kitchen paper. I didn't want to mix any of the water in, so when the level got low I left it to congeal cut it up and scraped off the last of the impurities, then melted it through some more kitchen paper in the oven, so all of it had been filtered twice. Once it had all melted through, I put it into the freezer until I'd collected enough to make my largest batch of soap yet. Over time, I collected almost five kilograms of sheep tallow and calculated a recipe with 3% superfat. Please remember to be safe while handling lye. Wear goggles, gloves, close toe shoes and long clothes and work in a well-ventilated area away from children and pets. I added five tablespoons of sugar in the same volume of hot water to boost the lava. There was also a chance to experiment with various colours and essential oil blends I've been wanting to try. I wasn't sure what the lather would be like just using tallow, or how quickly it would trace, so for this first foray I'm dividing the batter into seven single colour batches. Because all my previous soaps were either vegan or vegetarian, I didn't want to use my regular moulds, so I've been saving milk cartons to use. I thought a single solid oil soap would trace quickly. My usual recipes include coconut oil, shea butter and beeswax, all of which trace fast, so I was surprised at how long this batter took to trace and how long it remained fluid. Next time I'll try some of the swirl techniques that require a slower trace that I can get with my usual beeswax soaps. The batter is not separating into oil and water, so it's reached emulsification, but it's still very fluid. I'm not used to it. Normally once my batter has emulsified, I've got a minute or two to get it into the mould, so this felt slightly unnerving. I realised at this point that batch 4 with the pink clay was setting up really fast, I think due to the clove bud oil in the essential oil blend. Spices tend to accelerate trace, so I poured it before it could set in the jug. I closed the cartons with clothes pegs to exclude air and reduce soda ash. At this point I poured the soap according to which batch was setting up first. Unfortunately, my camera battery ran out before I poured batch three, the purple clay, and batch one, the kaolin clay, which were the two that set up the slowest. I put the cartons into a bucket to hold them upright, and I didn't insulate them, so there were corresponding gel patterns showing which sides were kept warmer by the other soaps. I'd run out of energy, so I left them for several days before peeling off the cartons and cutting the bars. The soap was quite firm by that point. I think the colours are beautiful and I particularly love the scent blends in batches 3, 6 and 7. I use lavender in every bar because it's the favourite scent of the person I'm giving these to, which is the neighbour who gave me the mutton in the first place. It seemed the least I could do. The soap is only two weeks into cure and really needs at least another two weeks, but I was impatient. It took a little time to work up a lather and it was lotion-like with small bubbles. 
If I were to add in other oils, I'd probably put in about 5% castor oil and 20% coconut oil. But I'm happy with it overall. <laughs> 